gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow you have a 25 question test. You have 30 minutes to do it. It's your last day of 30, so please enjoy it. Next week it'll be a minute faster at 29. Actually, next week's writing week. Yippee. So you will miss the test. I know. So you have a writing week starting on Friday. We are going to write. I'm also struggling with trying to pass back papers. How about I sign you essays and then we pass back papers? Okay. Whoa. No, did, you, no. did you not hear that disgust out of Ella? And now the intense eye shaming. Fine. I'm also trying to balance getting your stuff out too. It's not easy. Oh, that is ridiculous. That is insanity. No. What? We have more than one slide left. Last period only had one slide left that I never got to. So we are going to move faster than that. But, well, that was a strong response from Ella. Okay, I'll take that into consideration. Got it. So we do have writing week starting on Friday. Uh, tomorrow you do have a test focus uh, and your math are due. Ew. Here we go on your whiteboard. Let's do it. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the first country to challenge Soviet power. What is the name of the first country to challenge Soviet power? Good. Sailor. Poland. On your whiteboard, what country is going to have Prague Spring? Good. What do you got? Pedro. Czechoslovakia. On your whiteboard, what country is going to politely say, hi, Soviet Union, we like you, we're not trying to get rid of you personally, but we would just like some economic changes here. Ooh, I could use some of you. What do we got, Bo? Poland. Poland. Poland is the only one who wants just economic changes. We're not trying to get rid of Russia. On your whiteboard, what country will rebel and get clobbered by Warsaw nations. Warsaw nations. Ooh, I got a lot of you wrong. Warsaw nations. What is it? Haley. Czechoslovakia gets clobbered by Warsaw nations. What, Warsaw? Clobbered? I just wanted you to use a visual of like the beating. No, clobbered's like Uber. Clobbered? Yeah. No, that's yeah. slobbered. No. You're right. Yeah, clobbered is like when you hit people. No, that's yeah. not what I think of. <laughs> On your whiteboard, please tell me what country is going to be aggressively beaten by the Soviet Union? Do we see the difference between the two? Because I got a bunch of you on that one. Which one is it, Christian? Hungry. Why? Do you, Emily, do you not have a board? There's plenty around the room. There's some over there. There's some over there. Yeah, but there's some underneath your desk. There could be one underneath your desk. Have you looked? There's one underneath Kira. Kira's got two going here. See, you ask, you shall receive. No, you're important. You deserve to have what everyone else has. On your whiteboard, please tell me what country is going to elect its own leaders and then that leader will be executed publicly. Good. What do you got, Lucy? Hungry. Hungry. On your whiteboard, what country is going to be beaten? And then the Brezhnev Doctrine comes out saying that this will happen to any country who does this. Good. Kira. Czechoslovakia. On your whiteboard, please tell me, after the defeat of Czechoslovakia by the Warsaw Nations, Protests are going to ring out all around the world on what? Good. Cyrus. College campuses are where these protests are really going to be led. Cyrus knew what I wanted. Not true. There's a couple other people, but he knew right away. What year did it happen? Are we friends now, Ella? Ooh. Do you hear how spicy that shirt was? What is it, Ella? 1968. In what country are we going to get the largest protest ever with 10 million people coming out to support? What do we got, Nina? France. France. What country 
At a Vietnam War protest gets four kids shot. We still have problems where kids keep getting shot. It obviously is what country, Roth? The US. Four of our college kids are shot on Ohio, Kent State's campus. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the leader who will gain independence for South Africa and dismantle the apartheid? Good. What do you got? Uh, Wade. Nelson. Nelson Mandela. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is. Nope, we gotta go. All right. Okay, yesterday we got to terrorism. We didn't really do much, yeah? yeah. Perfect. Okay. So, terrorism. You need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that terrorism is a mental game. Now, why are countries starting to use terrorism starting in the 1950s? Why? There's a, a specific reason why it's created in the 1950s. Andreas? Um, I think why can't they? What? No, it's a specific thing. In the 1950s, why don't they go to war with us? Are they allies? Nope. As soon as you hear the answer, you're going to be annoyed. Well, it's not mutual destruction, for sure, because, you know, they don't have it, and we do. What is it, Sailor? No, no. Please help me, Caitlin. Yeah, we have nuclear weapons. Think about it. Stop and think about it for two seconds. So if you're in Afghanistan and you are absolutely pissed at the United States because of the sanctions in which the World Trade Organization has levied, which has completely decimated any potential <coughs> that your country has to make economic gains, okay, can you bomb the United States no. as Afghanistan? No, because what will the United States immediately do? We will literally decimate the entire region and we will wipe out every single person. Okay? You cannot bomb us directly as a country because we'll retaliate as a, a country. So they cannot attack us because we can wipe them off the map. It's not mutually assured destruction because we have the weapons and they don't, don't have the weapons. So it's not mutually assured. It is, they can be wiped off the map in about two button pushes. They don't have that type of capability. So it has to be a mental war because they cannot go toe to toe with the United States. That's why they target civilian war for uh, civilian targets in order to get people's mindsets to change, to feel uncomfortable in the spaces they already inhabit. And has it worked? Yeah. Yes, of course, it has. Look at us at the airports, for God's sake. Okay, airports. We take off our shoes to get on planes. Okay, we're the only country in the world to do, to do that. Now it's because we did have a shoe bomber. Okay, one guy got on one plane with a shoe with a bomb in it, and now every person in America takes off their shoes. Even Hanky does, because he has to do whatever we do, and even though he doesn't have to, because he's under seven, he takes off his shoes. It's rather annoying, but mm. cute. Okay, so terrorism is done in order to inflict pain on people who have nuclear weapons. Now, if we just kill a bunch of citizens in a plaza, will they drop an entire bomb to kill an entire population? No, no because that retaliation is so severe, it keeps that nuclear power in check, but also inflicts a ton of pain and changes. Now, one of the things that I love about teaching terrorism and my father, no matter how many times I've told him, thinks it's only Islamic terror groups exist. Well, the funny thing is, ladies and gentlemen, it's actually a bunch of white Catholic people, you know, my father, white and Catholic, who start terrorism. So let's begin, shall we? Yeah. Huh? Um, that is going to be uh, your shining path. We're going to get that. for So... I'm going to teach you three different examples of terrorists before we even get to Islamic terrorism. <laughs> so if you think terrorism is only done by Islamic people, you don't know anything about terrorism. It's white people who made it. White Catholics, probably unexpected. Here we go. Ireland is where we're heading next. Ireland is controlled by what country? The UK, okay, the UK is Protestant, write it down. 
The UK is Protestant. Ireland has a huge Catholic population. In Ireland, we have the Irish Republican Army, Irish Republican Party, or the IRA, who wants to leave the UK and become its own country. So they begin bombing sites in Britain. They kill all uh, 3,000 people. So it's like a real thing, and it does change. Does, do they win? Yeah, they do, actually. There's a Northern Ireland and a Republic of Ireland. <laughs> yeah, they win. There's a Protestant part that's part of the UK, and then there's Ireland, which you, when you think of Ireland, you think of, like, the bigger pay. That is Catholic. They did win. It's hard fought, and no one really says they win, but did they win? Yeah. Yeah, they got what they wanted. Okay. In 1994, it ends. It starts in the 60s. It ends in 1994, and they kill about 3,000 people. Okay. So, that's a bunch of white people. Let's go to some more <laughs> white people. Spain. Okay. So, they are called the separatists, or the ETA. They are from a northern region of Spain, and they want to get away from Franco. Who is Franco? <laughs> He's a World War II relic. Who is he, Roth? No, he's fascist, he's fascist, he hates communists. Okay, he's a fascist leader, he's the last one left in Europe at this point. Okay, they are going to uh, kill about 800 people. Okay, you don't need to know his name. Oh, you need to know it's Franco. They hate Franco. They want to get away from Franci uh, uh, Francisco Franco. Uh, they kill about 800 people, uh, and they do kill the successor of Franco. So they essentially end fascism by killing the successor. Okay. And in 2011, they officially declare uh, a peace with the government. No, it doesn't matter. I don't even know who the successor was. Okay, then you're going to Peru. All right. Are any of these Islamic? No. no. Now, my next page. I got Islamic, so don't you worry. Okay, now, are there Jewish terrorists? Yes. yes. Are there Hindu ones? Yes. Yeah, they just killed about 400 people about a month and a half ago in Pakistan. <laughs> so does every religion in the world use terrorism? Yes, so if you think terrorism is only done by Islamic extremists, you are completely and utterly wrong. Is everyone clear? That's the one lesson you learned today. Please know that terrorism is not just done by Islamic extremists. It is done by extremists in every religion. And started by white people. Here we go. For your Peru shining path, you do need to know it's Guzman, who is right over here. Okay, you do need to know it's Guzman, and he loves Mao and the Cambodia's Khmer Rouge. Okay, so he wants to be communist. communist. He wants to be communist. Peru is a, uh, a light democracy. It's not a good democracy, but it is a light democracy. Okay, they're going to kill 37,000 people. Okay. The people. They're just blowing up structures and government officials and regular civilians. Because they want to turn the government communist. Okay. In 1992, Guzman's arrested. In 2011, they sign, um, they agree to a peace treaty. Yeah, 2011. This is Guzman up here. I like the Peruvian outfits. I'm a sucker for stripes. I love how he's a stalker. Yeah. Okay. I like that he still gets his sunglasses, though. I hope when I'm in prison for whatever crime, they let me keep my sunglasses. You know, just in case. Anyway. All right. Islamic terrorism. So, did we go straight to Islamic terrorism, or did we have some delay? 
Cool. Yeah, cannot stress that enough. Here we go. You need to know Islamic terrorism is occurring because of fundamentalists or extremists. Okay. Are they the majority of people or a small minority? A teeny tiny minority. Okay. So, with that being said, you do need to know Boko Haram, which is still super, super active <laughs> in West Africa. Yeah, oh yeah. The, um, when we get to Nigerian AP comp, half of our cleavages is going to be about Boko Haram. They are known for capturing children, forcing young girls, I'm talking like six, seven, eight, into marriages. And then they take boys and force them into their military at the same ages. Six, seven, eight. Them from yes. They wreak havoc. They have de uh, destabilized the entire con uh, the entire West continent continent of Africa. Okay, it's they're they're very influential. They are famous for capturing two buses full of schoolgirls heading to school, and they uh, did they exploited them into child brides. Um, well, no, everyone's trying to do it, but it's not just a clear-cut defeat. How is defeating terrorism going for the United States? Bad. Yeah, it's not going super well, right? So what do you think about a poor nation with a lot of corruption issues in a very complex racial situation doing? It's very, it's very difficult to eradicate terrorism because it's embedded within the people. Well, I just feel like that situation, like everyone would have been on it. Oh, everyone is. I mean... People still talk about it, and those. When was it? Uh, that one was during Obama's uh, administration, so I think it was 2011 that they captured it. Okay. All right. What do you got? What are they trying to do? What's their? They're trying to push their lifestyle of having uh, child brides, which is one of their components. Military warfare. They're just trying to get for themselves as much wealth as possible. Oh, yeah, sure thing. Terrorism in the United States. We are not worried about foreign invaders. We, the FBI, says the number one threat to the United States today is domestic terrorism. There was a plot exploited by the FBI like a month ago that a bunch, these two people were trying to take down the power grid of New Jersey by shooting bullets into the... Um, the electrical power source, you know, the big... Transformers, not like the ones on your street, but the big old power plants, yeah? They were trying to shoot all of the things down so they can start a riot within the people fighting the government. They want to start a civil war. And they Yeah, it, uh, right now one of the biggest threats to the United States is our power grid. That is like a huge thing that is going on right now is that it's been under attack. Up in Trinity, people were shooting at the power lines with guns, trying to shoot them down, and that would cut power to th uh, millions of people. Okay? Well, think about it. If, you're, if your house isn't getting electricity, are you going to blame idiots, or are you eventually going to blame the government? So people who are starting to do this here in 2023 in the United States are trying to sow anarchy to create some sort of civil war. People like chaos. We've all seen bad. Um, and people really just don't really like political structures. Maybe just this one, or maybe hoping for a different one. Um, but the more problems administrations have, the more likely, you know? I mean, it's tumultuous times in 2023 here in the United States. Can we agree? All right, moving forward. Okay, Boko Haram, you need to know. Al-Qaeda, oh, we haven't got there. I got so excited, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, Al Shalib in East Africa. They're not as famous as Boko Haram. This is like on the Somali coast. Yeah. Okay. The other one's really pushing a lot of corruption. They are also kind of into child brides, but not like Boko Haram. They're really into it. Um, and the Islamic State of Iraq. That is what is post Saddam Hussein. I don't need you to know that because we're gonna really get into that. Okay, Al Qaeda though you should know. And why should you all know Al Qaeda, Reese? Reese, look at the damn picture, woman. Why? Oh, 
Yeah, Al Qaeda is responsible for 9-11, led by Osama bin Laden, which you do need to know his name. Now, um, Al Qaeda is going to be pissed off at the United States because of sanctions that are going to destroy both Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan. The economic uh, constraint upon those countries because of those sanctions will trigger a response. Fun fact, Osama bin Laden was, uh, went to Yale or Princeton? Yeah. He went to Yale, yeah. Like he's American, like lived, like he had an apartment in New York City, like the whole thing, like he lived here. He was incredibly wealthy, hence why he was here. Um, and like lived his life and partied in like New York City and like went to nightclubs and stuff like that. Isn't that like the opposite of what you think of for Osama bin Laden, huh? Ryland. I um, actually was looking at this a couple of days ago you just casually, okay, go ahead. Uh, well, because I heard that he was like a billionaire, so I wondered how he made all his money. And he was actually his, he his had uncle, like 48 right? uh, siblings, and most of them were Western educated, but he was educated in Saudi Arabia. There you go. But then wasn't he even here for school? No, he, he spent a lot of his time. He was a, like an Islamic extremist that formed a bank. I thought yeah. he was here for school. He fought in like the, like the war against Russia, which yeah. Russia invaded Afghanistan. Yeah, which we're going to get to here yeah. in two seconds. I thought he was here for school. I thought that's how he got his A lot of his siblings were. Maybe. What do you got? Uh, because Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan is going to start allow these terrorist groups to uh, start kind of collecting there. And they're not dismantling them. They're just ignoring them. So we start charging them uh, sanctions and stuff like that. They're also starting to do crimes against women and stuff like that. So the United States starts levying sanctions, a.k.a. the UN does. All right, I'm not gonna go crazy into 9-11. We, we have a brief understanding of it, yes? Okay, 3,000 Americans are going to die. The towers are going to be hit by civilian planes. Three planes get hijacked. One goes down in a field in New Jersey because the passengers take over the plane in mid-flight. Two of them are going to go in, one, there's four total taken. One goes into the Pentagon. One was supposed to head to the White House, I they think the other one was. And then two, of course, go into your towers, okay? It's Pennsylvania, is it Pennsylvania? Yeah. I know who said New Jersey, but it's like in that region. It's pro I think it is Pennsylvania. There are four planes are gonna crash. You should ask your parents where they were when 9-11 occurred. It's just like when Kennedy got shot, you know where you were. I was a sophomore in high school. Um, my brother told me, and the rest of the day, Huh? Oh, I wasn't alive for Kennedy. I'm not that. I'm not that old. But it's like Kennedy. It's like Kennedy. You know where you were. Yeah. I mean, I remember when Obama captured, uh, killed Ob um, Osama bin Laden. I was sitting on my first apartment with my now husband, and we were watching some stupid television. And then it cut to Obama saying that Osama bin Laden. Osama bin Laden. That's funny. Osama bin Laden has been captured and killed. Um, that was like a huge moment and like the whole country like like celebrate like people were went out in New Tampa Florida out on their balconies at 10.05 at night on a Wednesday or some shit and everyone was standing outside clapping and like yeah, it was bizarre <laughs> what do you got Ella I'm just Yes. Well, London is a bigger city. Yes. Um, it depends. It was a no-fly. There were no planes in the sky, and that was really haunting that day. Um, now, post-pandemic, remember during the pandemic when you looked up and there was no planes in the sky? And it was kind of, like, eerie and stuff like that. So that, was, like, has been dimmed on that. Everything stopped. Um, schools, some schools were let out. Now, I'm from Boston. I was in Boston when it happened. All four planes left from... Boston. Um, there was one girl at my school. We're in like a upper middle class neighborhood, and her dad was one of the pilots in my school. So that was like really weird having that weird connection. Because I'm in Boston. Boston obviously is four hours away from New York, but having the one of the pilots come because they all fly out of Logan, and that was a major exporting terminal. I mean, I just have like weird memories and like the TV for like weeks. That was the only thing we saw. Um, one of the biggest criticisms I had is that my high school never talked about it directly. They told everyone to turn off the TVs and just ignore it because not everyone had cell phones. 
That's how old it was, okay? Um, and I think that was a huge mistake. My mom still lives the other two years, so I can watch. Yeah, TV. some schools were doing that. My school didn't, but um, it was just, like, really sur surreal, and I just remember there was a documentary that came out a couple months after, and I remember watching that sitting in my front living room very vividly, and, like, the horrors of that day. No, and during my sophomore year, it came out a couple weeks after, because there was a, I don't remember what the documentary is, there was a freelance documentarian who was following around one of the FDNY um, fire stations. Mm -hmm. He was just recording what their daily looks like, and if you watch it, he was recording on 9-11, so he followed wherever the truck went, so he was following on 9-11, so he was in the building. And you could just hear, the thing that I remember the most is that throughout the whole thing, once they're like in the building, in the towers, you just kept hearing these thuds. And at the end of the documentary, where they tell you that most of the firefighters in the documentary died because of the collapse, all of those thumps were people jumping from up in the towers. Like things were so bad in the high towers that jumping was the best option. And that, that thud, like the whole time my parents and I were, 15, your age, and then we get like, what is that noise? And then at the end, they're like, oh, that noise that you heard the whole time, those are people jumping. And that really stuck with me still to this day. And of course, everyone with uh, George W. and all that stuff. What do you got? Well, um, they had to like investigate if CVS like in Fort Lauderdale was like one of the pilots, because one of the pilots, because you know one of the pilots went to flight yes. school in Florida? They all did, they yeah. all went to, uh, same beach? Well, like, they, they used to, in Dublin Airport, they used to have a house right next door my grandma. They went to the flight school in Daytona. I know that. Like I can't remember what it was called. Well, right next to that airport as well. I think that's where they did their flight school. I think they were, it doesn't matter. I don't. They're dead, and I'm grateful for that. It's a terrible situation. Um, what are you pointing at? Yes, we do. Thank you, Cyrus. All right, here we go. So... That's going to happen. We do get Biden Laden under Obama. As you can see, a young Joe Biden. Young is, you know, significantly younger than he is now. Obama is right here. And then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is right here. This is a very famous image um, of the sitcom room. It's Biden is right here. Anyway, terrorism in the United States. Terrorism is not just foreign, it is also domestic. In 2023, the biggest threat to the United States is domestic terrorism, as we kind of talked about. Uh, the most famous example of domestic terrorism uh, is the Oklahoma City bombings, which is done uh, to protest the federal <laughs> government. It's an anti-government. They blow up a federal government building. It has, like, the IRS in it. It kills eight, 168 people, including 32 kids. The bombs were built, uh, placed right next to the daycare. Oh, yeah. So, all right, here we go. So, let's talk Spain, ladies and gentlemen. So, Spain is under Franco's rule, a fascist Franco, until 19, 1939 to 1975. You need to know that he is going to be overthrown. Okay, and he is going to uh, die in 1979, 1975, sorry, and he's going to be replaced by a democracy. And Uganda is your next country. Uganda, you need to know, they have a guy called Indy Amin. Okay, and he rules from 1971 to 79. I just, I don't care, don't memorize the dates, but I'm trying to give you like a context, if everyone's here on that. Um, he's known as the Uganda Butcher. So is that what we want our leaders to be nicknamed? No, we do not. Okay, he is super unpredictable. Sometimes he was really engaging, mm -hmm. and yeah, this guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, a, he, he's killed thousands and thousands of people. Mm. Um, anyway, so super unpredictable. Some days he was like a good guy, like chairman of African Unity. He was a member of the UN Commission. Like 
And then other years, he would just go on these rampage, uh, rampage of just mass murder. Okay. Um, it, anyone who challenged his authority. He likes being celebrated, but any challenges, he would just lash out. Okay. Military industrial complex. If you don't know what it is, put a box around it. Here we go. The military industrial complex is when governments and militaries work together to make better weapons. What country spends the most on military industrial complex? The United States does. We spend the most by far. Okay, China is right behind us, or may have just taken the lead, honestly. But it's us too. What do you got? Military industrial complex is when a government and the military spend lots of money creating the best weapons or the most advanced weapons. Okay, you need to know every country in the world is doing this. Now, of course, in 1979, what two countries are the leaders of this? In 1979, Micah, what two countries? USSR and US are the two largest spenders of the military industrial complex. But you need to know every country is doing it. Every country is spending money on this in case a war breaks out to protect themselves. Write it down. Every country is spending money on the military industrial complex because if war does break out, they have to be able to protect themselves. Uh, not as much, like Finland isn't. I actually just watched a really interesting documentary about the Finnish prime minister. It was super interesting. In Finland? Yeah, because she came into power as one of the youngest political leaders ever in history and then had to deal with Putin and a pandemic and the economic changes of Finland, and she's crushed it. She's done really well. All right, here we go. The end of the Cold War is your next heading. Okay, Deontay, which is right here. Deontay is a pause or relaxed tension between U.S. and USSR. Deontay is a relaxing of tensions between the U.S. and USSR in the 1960s. Okay? During this time, so there's everything is better. Everything's better. In the 1950s, we had Kennedy and his Bay of Pigs. In the 60s, everyone is calming down. They sign the Strategic Arms Limitation Treaty, or SALT Treaty. Because things are better in the 1960s, we do the SALT Treaty, which is going to limit your ICBMs, or Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles. I told you those would come back. And that's what we're going to see. Okay, you need to know that the USSR benefits the most from this. Because economically, they're not doing so well. Okay, you also need to know they have very little foreign trade. And the Cold War is very expensive. So, the USSR is benefiting the most. Now, the US needs this as well, because politically, post-Vietnam, the government is not popular. So, the Russians need this Deontay, the Americans need it as well. Now, during the Deontay, uh, Reagan allows us, no, Nixon, I'm sorry, it's Nixon. Nixon allows us to sell rice to Russia for the first time in 60 years. So American farmers are going to prosper because of the Deontay. Okay, put a big star. It ends because of the Soviet-Afghan war. So let's talk about the Soviet-Afghan war. The Soviet-Afghan war is in 1979. Soviet Union invades Afghanistan. Okay? They don't win. 
speaking of the one year anniversary of Ukraine. <laughs> okay, the Soviets can't win and it undermines their power worldwide. It's a huge blow to the Soviets. Okay, you need to know this is going to increase tension in the Cold War. Okay, increases tension so much so, hold on two seconds. We are going to create the Strategic Defense Initiative, also known as SDI, also known as Star Wars. And this is one of my favorite things ever because it's amazing. What do you got, Ross? Um, why was the Cold War so monotonous? They signed one treaty of ballistic, uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles, but nothing about nukes. Okay, because the uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles are how we're going to start the war. We're going to end the war with nukes. Okay, this makes me so happy. So we made speeches about our ability to shoot lasers. Yeah, this is in 1980. We start this. By the way, what just came out? Star Wars. We stand in front of American flags saying we've achieved lasers in space that can blow things up. We leak plans to the Soviets of how these things are actually made on purpose. So the Soviets actually believe it. We don't have this technology. It's a complete lie. Put a big star. It's a complete lie. We do not have this technology. We stand in front of the American people saying, oh my God, we can shoot lasers. We did not have the technology at all. Okay, but the Soviets really did believe. Put another star. Soviets will spend all their money trying to build lasers. <laughs> and it will bankrupt their country. So does it work? Yes. yes. This is one of the reasons why we win the Cold War. So they spent all their money trying to make space lasers. Well, we told them we had space lasers, so they were trying to make. <laughs> Space lasers. They, were stupid. they, they just couldn't saying. figure it out because also we hadn't figured it out. And they had these secret plans, top, top secret, like the highest level of clearances because we obviously leaked it to them. And um, they couldn't make those plans work because we never made the plans work. So they're just stupid. No, they're not stupid. Russia, Soviet Union is not stupid. Putin is not a stupid man. He is not. Is he a horrible man? Yes. Is he a bad man? Yes. He is not stupid. Are they losing in Ukraine? Are they losing in Ukraine? Yes. No, Russia. Yes, Russia is absolutely losing. Okay. You need to know that because of the money lost, spending all this money trying to make space lasers, they are going to have to implement new economic policies under Gorbachev. And you need to know the name Gorbachev. Gorbachev is your last Soviet leader. Okay. Under Gorbachev, they're going to do perestroika. You're just naming all the weird words. Huh? You're just naming all the weird words. Well, it's Russia. Yeah. Gorbachev, Perestroika, which is all about capitalists, introducing capitalist policies, and then you have Glasnost. All my AP comp kids are just like cruising right through. They're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Glasnost is about um, democracy, uh, democracy, and Perestroika is about capitalism. That's all you need to know about them. What? Perestroika is capitalism. Glasnost is democracy. Okay. Now, you do need to know that Reagan is president while Gorbachev's in power. And because of Reagan and Gorbachev, they are going to sign the in Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty or the INF. Okay, this is the one that limited, limits how many nukes you can have. This is the forefather to the one that Putin canceled yesterday. What? Yeah. Yeah. Putin says he's no longer following the treaties that stop him from using u nuclear weapons. Now, does that mean he's going to use one tomorrow? No. Does that mean he's blowing up the United States today? No, that's not it. But... He is trying to saber rattle or show, hey, I have this power. I can use it if I want to. He's just trying to cause commotion <coughs> and concern. Hmm? How many nukes do you want? Because I don't know because it's been redone twice since then. Okay. We have a ton of them. So 
we can blow up the world multiple times. So that's all you need, right? Yeah. Instead of just blowing it up once, we can blow it up like 400 times, I guess. I have no idea. That stuff I don't care about. Okay. You need to know that Gorbachev is going to end economic support for satellite states. So they're going to end economic supports because they have no money. money. So he's going to officially say, you should still be our satellite, but we're not going to pay you. So what are all these states saying? Yeah. No. Hell no. So they also say the Soviet military will not help them. So immediately all these countries begin declaring their independence. Okay. So are they fighting their satellite countries to maintain them? No. no. In 1989, the Berlin Wall comes down. In 1990... The uh, East and West Ger uh, Berlin, uh, East and West Germany are now unified. Okay, uh, most of your satellite countries are going to begin declaring their independence in 1989, 1990, and 1991. Okay, so what you are going to see, ladies and gentlemen, that in Lithuania and Georgia, they're some of the first countries to overthrow their Soviet leaders and create democracies. Okay, Georgia. Uh, Georgia. Georgia's the name of a country. It's actually one of the first democratic nations in Eastern Europe, actually. Okay, you need to know that the USSR officially collapsed in 1991, and the Cold War is over. Now, post Cold War, these democracies are incredibly unstable. So, is everything wonderful and beautiful? No, no. and that's another problem. See ya! By the way, in my first year of teaching in 2010, my map of my classroom had the USSR on it. In first grade, I remember that there was a book about the countries that had the Soviet Union, and I didn't know what it was. Yeah, it doesn't exist anymore. See ya, have a good day. By the way, I did finish content. Sweet.